Hola amigos, it's live on KXP. I'm your host, Alvina Cabarera. Welcome. You can find us at 90.3 FM Seattle, where the music matters, and streaming worldwide at kxp.org and on our um, mobile apps as well. And uh, all these sessions, podcasts, and stories that we are telling are made possible by donation from people like you. So thank you so much for your support. I'm super excited because I'm going to introduce to one of my favorite South American composer, Juan Bauters, is here. Así que, bienvenido. ¿Cómo te thank va? You. Uh, uh, bien. No más bien, por suerte. <laughs> nice. Bueno, this is Wandering Rebel, Juan Bauters' latest album, one of my favorite of 2023 so far. And uh, Juan Bauter is here to share a couple of songs with all of you. So, ¿estás listo? Ready? Yeah. Perfecto. Juan Bauter's live on KEXP. Yes. Your eyes slide down my throat on your mind. There's a cold winter in I grab you by your ear Till the cracks on your lips appear I guess there is not much for you and me next year Winter in Woodside, Queens I know that you're a freak, so mean The things you dangle in my sleep You're so ugly with good teeth Why don't you lend your body one more time to me Oh no Frozen feet Make me wanna keep Staring at you Till my heart feels the heat Winter in Woodside, Queens I know that we are freaks So me
Thank you. One, two, three, four.
you.
He's in love. Juan Bauters, live on KXP. Felicitaciones. Gracias. Qué placer. This was an incredible performance. Thank you so much. Um, and I'm super excited to talk a little bit with you. I think that we've been waiting for this session for a very long time. I think so, so finally, right? yeah. finally, you are here. I would love to know um, specifically how the tour is going uh, right now. I know that it's the second half of the tour, right? Yeah, we're doing uh, the American tour. Uh huh. Uh, it's going really well, actually, you know, like I'm, I'm accompanied by a group of uh, friends, musicians that uh, put as much love into it as I do. And uh, <laughs> you can see it comes out, uh, I think, through the music. So I feel well accompanied and uh, and the music sounding good and we're getting along well. And I don't know. I mean, we have a lot of shows to go. It's a continuous thing with the music. So we'll have uh, years to come. <laughs> See, I love that you started the West Coast tour in Seattle. I think that Seattle and Juan Bauters has a very, uh, like a long-term relationship, Yeah, <laughs> right? Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was trying to think yesterday, the first time <laughs> I came to Seattle and uh, um, what it was like, but I don't remember. I remember really well the color of the trees, the variety of the different trees they have in here. And the mist, the, the, the fog, and the cloudy skies. Beautiful air, yeah. nice water, yeah. everything that we need to survive. Great. It's a beautiful yeah. Emerald City. So I'm, I'm mm -hmm. so glad that, it, that you enjoyed your time here. And it's great to, to talk a, a little bit about a Wandering Rebel, which is your latest album. And I remember like the, the album before a Wandering Rebel that it was... Um, real life situations. And I would like to compare both, specifically the context uh, where these albums born, because uh, I know that uh, well, no, we had a pandemic in the middle, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I would like to, to know a little bit about this context, the inspiration of this latest album. And maybe if you can compare with how you was, were feeling, you know, with the different two albums. Yeah, I feel like uh, my discography so far has been a good representation of what my life has been like, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I started with the group The Beats out of uh, Jackson Heights, Queens. Uh, our first release was 2009 and uh, we did three albums with the group and then I broke off as a solo artist and then I started thinking uh, what represents me as a person in the world aside from the group. So the group uh, were people from Queens. That was our flag, you know? Now I think, who am I, you know? I'm, uh, I'm, I'm from Queens also. I feel I represent the town and the immigrant life in New York City. But also I started connecting with Latin America. That is uh, my tradition where I've been born and where I grew up. So slowly uh, things come on my discography and describe what my life is like. Real life situations at some point, prior to real life situations, to give a little context, uh, I did La Onda de Juan Pablo, my first own Spanish album. And I recorded that album on a trip through Latin America, visiting different countries and uh, trying to uh, showcase in my music within my songs, things I liked about uh, instruments I liked about each country I visited. That was the first album I ever contributed with someone, meaning other people played instruments in my music. You know, uh, before I was uh, self-produced, I recorded and played all the instruments in all the albums. I found that on that album that uh, my music was ri ri it was richer. It was uh, more uh, had mo more to offer when I incorporated other people. These people played instruments in my album. Then I said, let's invite people to write with me, other people to write songs with me. I opened the door in the composition part of the process. So I invited people that I knew, different colleagues in the music world. That was real life situations. That was the original idea. I started and I did songs with uh, people in Canada, people in the United States and Mexico. The original idea was to visit Europe and uh, South America also to get a really rich uh, 
palette of sounds and, and, and compositions from different people, different places. But in the middle of this process, COVID came, <laughs> right? And uh, COVID... Uh, a small detail. <laughs> yeah, so I had to rethink about the album, the real life situations. And it was finished inside my place. Locura, the song we played earlier, mm -hmm. de describes a little bit the feeling of being inside the house and wanting to have uh, physical contact with other people. Uh, anyway, so the album Real Life Situations is a combination of free world and COVID world, you know? Mm -hmm. Pre-COVID and COVID, the beginning of COVID. I finished it at the beginning of 2020. 2020. Then I had to do another album, I thought, right? <laughs> After Real Life Situations. Uh, we toured Real Life Situations for the first time last year, 2022. We showed it to the world. But I had been writing and... Uh, writing and recording through 2021 and 20, 2021, really, I recorded. In, uh, and also uh, in 2020, right when COVID hit, uh, since, since I played in Uruguay for the first time in 2016, I reconnected with people my age there. I reconnected with the country in a different way because before I was just a tourist that would go every once in a while, visit my family and go back to America. But now um, as an adult, I play music there. I, I connected with people my age my music connected with people there. So I always wanted to spend time in Uruguay, but because of life obligations, I never had a chance to be there. During COVID, COVID gave me the opportunity to reconnect with Uruguay. And uh, I did some songwriting in Uruguay for the first time before I had never written a song in Uruguay. Really important for me, right? To uh, show the world what it's like to write from my home country. So I did that. I also wanted to, to talk about life in New York City during COVID, so I went to New York and, and produced some songs with uh, my colleague, Carlos mm -hmm. Hernandez, a uh, New Yorker I've known for a long time, uh, and did some songwriting in New York to express that feeling also. Also wanted to be in LA. I never re recorded songs in LA. I said, like, okay, we have time during COVID, I could do it, right? I went to L.A., lived there for a month, wrote and recorded songs in L.A. And then as the whole process was finishing, my friends in Brazil, Cesar, who did a session here, I think, right? Yes, it, like a couple of weeks ago. Oh, okay. but he did one, I think, a couple last year or oh, that was the first time? Maybe it was the first time, but Cesar, oh, okay. yes. Just Sergio, my, he's anyone. a really good friend of mine also. Uh, he said, hey, you want to come to Brazil and do some recording with my friend and me? We're starting a production group a duo, we want to record people, do you want to come? This is our first experience recording someone, he said. He had recorded his own album. The latest album he recorded as a production duo with his friend Biel Basile, uh, so percussionist and producer. So I went to Brazil and recorded songs in Brazil. So then I had all these songs that I recorded in Uruguay, Brazil, New York and LA. I had a pack of about 60 songs. And then I said, uh, let, me, um, let me wrap it up and uh, choose the best songs and make an album that showcases a little bit of each of these uh, moments in my COVID life. As that, as that was opening up, I, I developed a relationship with someone in Uruguay. And, and uh, well, uh, I, I see what we were talking earlier. Uh, we were expecting a baby in Uruguay, so my life brought me to Uruguay. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. Life brought me to New York uh, because my family moved to New York when I was a kid. Yes, when and you then, were a teenager, right? Yeah. We were talking about yeah. that. Yeah. So now life, for other reasons, reconnects me with my birthplace. It's an incredible feeling, really. And particular detail about this, the... Uh, I haven't really shared, is that the, the album, I handed in the album the day before, that the album was supposed to be handed in October 28th, and my daughter Luisa was born October 29th, <laughs> the day after, by a C-section. Uh -huh. She came out earlier, as, as soon as I finished my work. So that was a beautiful thing. Qué lindo, no? Yeah. And, I, and I really can feel that, that vibe uh, in this album, Juan Primero, 
felicitaciones por Gracias. this new moment in your life. Eh, and the roots, right? Es como the destiny uh, was calling you, you <laughs> know? know? Like, yeah. you had to come back. And that is such an incredible moment. I was talking with Nick Hakim, that yeah. I know that you know him, yeah. that he just uh, went to South America for the first time, like, after a decade. And, yeah. like, how, you know people that maybe grew up in the U.S., you know, and they're coming from Latin American roots, they need to go back, you know, in a moment in your life, yeah. you have to be there again. Yeah. And I don't know if you are conscious about the so many hits that you have in this uh, in this album, A Wandering Rebel, I have to say, like, I don't know, Milanes al Pan, hit, <laughs> hit total. <laughs> Nube Negra, hit también. And I, I would like to, to ask you about the collaborations on this album with Ilabamba, with Zoe, Frankie Cosmos, uh, especially the one with Ilabamba, such a beautiful song. I know she's been here also. Yeah, right? yes. I mean, she's yeah. Exacto. And I th uh, now she is uh, back in Mexico. Basically, she's living in Mexico. Yeah, after that. It was the beautiful that yeah. we talked about that song because the song, uh, it's a story about uh, someone wanting to move somewhere else hoping things be different, finding out later that uh, things will be the same everywhere you go, <laughs> that life is within, or something like that. <laughs> we really resonate with that yeah. song. I think that is super powerful and it's beautiful. So she, she and I were going through a very uh, similar moment when we recorded the song. Wow, wow. So how did you pick the, the collaborators for this album? Were friends or... Did you did you write with them too? No, mm -hmm. no. This was done in in privacy, as I said, COVID. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, but then you know I had really liked uh, showcasing other people within my music world. You know, claro. If we want to uh, frame it that way, uh, I feel like uh, it enriches the music to have other vocal tones and other f uh, feelings show throughout. Uh, so uh, the first one for Milanes Alpan, Argentinian singer that I had gotten in contact to participate on real life situations. As I said, the process was cut by COVID. She was supposed to uh, write a song with me for real life situations. Oh, nice. And then we, we cut that off. Uh, we said, we, uh, we, didn't, we didn't talk again. We hadn't, really, we hadn't really met. All this was online before. I went to Buenos Aires to record that track actually. And I said, hey, you wanna, you wanna meet uh, and have food? Because we never met. We met and we had food, and she ordered Milanesa. Oh, really? No. <laughs> without, without knowing, I would invite her to the song. Yeah, I, this is all true. She ordered Milanesa, and we ate. And then I said, I have this song. Uh, do you think this, this might be a good opportunity for us to collaborate? She said, yes, at once. She, next day or day after, she came to the studio and she recorded her vocals. It was great, great. I, I really like her vocal tone, her uh, spirit, her energy. Mm -hmm. It was great to collaborate with her. Greta, Greta Klein from Frankie Cosmos. Uh, she's a New Yorker, same as me. We grew up in the same city. I've known her and her family for a long time. I'm friends with uh, her brother. And I've been to her family's house a long time. She's a colleague musician. She's been doing the music thing as long as I have, pretty much. She's much younger than me, but she started really young. And time was up for us to sing together because I, I like her music a lot. I like her energy a lot. I thought this was a good opportunity to sing in a song that talks about New York. You know, I wanted to be someone uh, about, from New York to sing on this modus operandi song. And she came to the studio. It was a beautiful thing. She's friends also with Carlos Hernandez. I mentioned him. He produced the song uh, at a studio. I think he might have produced some of the early Frankie Cosmos songs. Carlos plays in a band called Ava Luna. Yeah, that's been around as long mm -hmm. as I have been around with the beats. Like we would share shows together in the 2000s, you know, before 2010s, you know, a long time ago. Carlos, shout out Carlos. And Greta came and she did the song. Then with Nube Negra, I really, I wanted also uh, someone that uh, sang in Spanish. And I thought of uh, Luz. I had never met her. We had been in touch online. I, I saw her at a show in San Antonio once. Uh, she came to the, to the show to see me play, and uh, we met. And then we've been in touch. I had always heard uh, about her and her music. I invited her, and she said yes. And we did this 
uh, what do you call it? Far away from each other. She was in Mexico. I was in Uruguay. We did this over the phone. We didn't meet at the oh studio. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, it was challenging to do that because that was the first time. Because I like being at the studio with someone and and have uh, comments about what we're doing mm -hmm. and talk about how it's going. So it, it's much more fluid if you work in person than doing it. She sent a recording. I have a, a comment, a suggestion. I send it back. Then she sends it again. It's very slow. But she nailed it with her. I really like her tone, her music. Uh, she did some really nice harmonies also. So it was great to collaborate with her. Uh, I would love to do songwriting with the three of them at some point. Because aside from liking their voice, I really like uh, the way they write music. And I think we could uh, do something nice together. I love it. I love it. I can see that album with more collaborations coming. I don't know if you are still composing now. I know that you are based in Uruguay currently, right? With of your course, family. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. So are you taking some time to enjoy the family? Because I, I mean, you said that this album is one of the most introspective ones that you have. So uh, I'm wondering, like, how is the current life of Juan Bauta right now, like after the, this tour? Uh, well, I, I took some time to enjoy with Luisa, my daughter, and see her grow. It's been beautiful, really, to be exposed to that reality, mm -hmm. to see how humankind developing in such a tender moment. Uh, and But also, you know, I, this is my passion. I love doing music. So even when I'm with her, I'm playing guitar, trying to sing some songs. I've been writing music. I write music all the time on the side. I have... I said I recorded 60 songs for Wandering Rebel. It's true, yeah. So I have a lot of uh, <laughs> songs that I, I, I hope I show the world. And I think it's a very particular moment for me to show the world what it would be like for me to do an album from Uruguay. Mm. Showing Uruguayan music and the feeling of being in Uruguay. Yeah. That is still fresh for me. You know, people live there their whole life. Uh, for them, that's normal. But for me, that always saw Uruguay from far away, to be there now... I, I would love to show that moment. I love it. If the people, I don't know, if they don't know uh, what uh, Uruguay looks like, one of the people said that is the the best country in the world. Uh, <laughs> I agree <laughs> with. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, I'm sure everyone says that about their country, you know. Uh, all countries have uh, good and bad things, right? Yeah. Uh, Uruguay is as Latin American country. It's in Latin America. In South America, it's in South South America. Mm -hmm. uh, we're far away from the tropic and whatever people think uh, Latin people are like in America, you know, in Latin, in, in, in America, uh, when they show, the way they show us Latin American on TV, they show whatever is closer to the U.S. I, I, I see why, cause, because of proximity, Americans think uh, uh, Latin Americans is like uh, Caribbean and uh, Central American and North American, like Mexican. Mm -hmm. So, but there's a lot more down there, right? Absolutely. This is, like, this is a cloudy <laughs> country, a cold country in the winter. Uh, it's a really humid, you know, uh, people are very introspective. Uh, and you can see in the music, it's very uh, nostalgic, introspective. It's not festive. We're not really festive. <laughs> We're more like within. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, People really like conversation. Uh, a party would be people getting together and talk. We don't dance at a party. <laughs> There's no <laughs> dancing. True. You know, people think that of like Latin people, we dance. Like, uh, Uruguayans don't really dance, you know. They would just get together and talk. Yeah, love, and have some mate. They lo love have mate and talk. <laughs> this, this is how, how I see life there. I feel re represented by that, uh, you know, I, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm that, you know, because yeah. of course I'm Uruguayan. <laughs> of course. And uh, uh, what it's like, uh, yeah, like I said, that's, that's, the, that's the general energy, nostalgic, introspective, thoughtful. Uh, also, in, nos in, nos in nostalgic feeling, there's happiness. It doesn't mean we're sad, you know, we're like we live with sadness and happiness uh, we don't hide. We don't hide sadness, and we don't hide uh, happiness. They both coexist. Totally, a perfect description. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. I feel the same about 
just the South American identity, I think. <laughs> the, the South South American identity. Yeah. I mean, you're from there. Well, you're from a different part of the continent. Exactly. But you relate. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Yeah. 100%. I'm sure if we keep going so more <laughs> south in like southern Argentina, it's, it's more and more, more like crazy. Pat <laughs> Patagonia, yeah, you know. Yeah. Yes, of course. Uh, this was a, a beautiful conversation, Juan. Uh, I'm thank you so much for thank being you for here having us. Thank with you. with all of us. Thank you so much, los músicos, la banda. Thanks all the team. Uh, it's a pleasure for us. So I hope that we can see you soon next thank time. You. No Negra, please, in the set list. Okay. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we should have spoken about this earlier. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's okay. It's okay. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Next time, next time. Bonus track. Sí, bonus track. Perfecto. Thank Muchas you. gracias. Gracias a ti. Y esto fue Juan Bauter's live on KEXP. Thank you so much. You're making this possible. So you can go to kexp.org slash live and make your donation now. And see you next time. My name is Alvina Cabrera. Muchas gracias. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.